Hi guys, Dan Hendrickson here. We're at Torquay Golf Club. Got a little review for you today. It is a secret ball by Titleist. I say secret, it's not actually a secret ball, but it is a secret ball because not many people have heard of it. It's the new Pro V1X, but it's the left dash version. These are available with Titleist, but they're a bit of a custom order. So you're not gonna see them on the shelves in your pro shop, but I have a box and I have Lester with me and we're gonna test them out. Let's head over to Leicester and uh, find out a little bit more about these golf balls. If it was a secret, it's not going to be a secret for much longer. Because I can't isn't. keep secrets. No, we know that. <laughs> That's why we? they never told us about it, because we don't keep secrets. <laughs> Just give you a little insight into what this ball is actually supposed to do for us. So. In the um, overall feel, it's meant to be slightly firmer than the Pro V1X. Yeah. It's also meant to have slightly lower flight. Okay. Lower spin in both the long game and the short irons. Right, okay. And in the short game, spin is also supposed to be lower. So it's basically lowering everything with a firmer feel. Okay, but does it go a bit higher? Are they saying that it goes, launches a bit higher? Nope, not no. according to this. Okay, so it's just basically a firmer feel and lower spin. Yeah. It, just, it says it's designed for players seeking a high flight similar to the Pro V1X yeah. with a dramatically lower full swing spin and firmer feel. So what I'm expecting to see from this golf ball is to see my ball flight maybe go up in the air as it would a Pro V1X. But ultimately we want to see the spin possibly drop off in all departments of my game. So we're going to test the driver today, we're going to test a long iron, we're going to test a mid iron, and then we're going to do some short game stuff around here just to get an idea of how it feels. And then maybe we'll hit a few putts as well, because if it feels a little bit firmer, that for me is a no-no. I like to feel a little bit softer in the ball. So we'll put that to the test as well with the putter. Let's, um, let's start hitting a few balls in the studio and uh, see what numbers we're getting from it. Driver numbers then, Pro V1X at the bottom here, 155 in the ball speed off the face, launching at 13.1, spinning at 2438, peaking at 35 yards high, and an average carry of 265. That's pretty much the top end of what my carry would be when I'm all warmed up and ready to go. I took out shot number five because it was a poor shot, so I just took that out. Then we move on to the left dash X ball, uh, we've got 156 in the ball speed off the face, so just a little bit quicker off the face than what I'm getting out of the X. That could be down to strike performance. Launching at 13.7, so a little bit higher in that launch. Again, strike could play a part in that. And then spinning at 2,235 revs, so 200 revs on an average different or lower than what I'm getting out of the X. 36 yards high, so a yard higher and 274 yards in the carry on an average. That is a very, very good carry distance for me at 274. And that is nine yards further than what I'm getting out of the Pro V1X. Some pretty decent numbers with that driver, yeah, isn't it? That's, I mean, that's a nine yard gain. That's massive, isn't it? I mean, if you could just suddenly by changing the ball, you gain nine yards, that's an extra club less to hit into a green. Um, I mean, if it was done purely on driver distance, even your dispersion rate was, was more or less the same, then it's definitely worth a change. So I'd say that's a tick. Did you notice when, we, when I was hitting in the studio any difference in sound? It did It did sound faster off the face and it was um, it was less clicky. It felt more solid, it did feel, sound firmer when you're hitting it. Okay, so less clicky but a firmer, firmer, yeah. firmer, louder sound. Would you say the same or? No, I wasn't feeling anything. You're not? No, I wasn't feeling any, I wouldn't have known what ball I was using to okay. be honest with you. It felt exactly the same. Well, that's, that's, a good, that's good, isn't it? Five iron numbers to start us off with then. So Pro V1X down the bottom here, an average um, ball speed 125, launching at 16.4, spinning at 5,479 on an average, peaking at 33 yards high, and an average carry of 181. Again, pretty much where I'd be. I got a couple of duffy ones in the middle there, which I've taken out shots four, five, and six, because they were just a bit heavy. If we then move into the left dash X ball, We've got one, two, six 
0.4 is an average ball speed off the face, which is a mile an hour maybe quicker than what I'm getting out of the X. Launching at 16.5 uh, degrees off the face, so basically the same as what I'm getting out of the X. Spinning it at 5,114 revs, so definitely a drop off there of around 300 revs or even more. And then 34 yards in the peak height, again one yard higher, an average carry of 186. So pretty, pretty much five yards longer, again purely down to the fact that I'm getting a little bit lower in the spin, just going that little bit further out there. Five iron numbers. Again, an increase in distance, a decrease in spin, but still manageable, I'd say. Looking at looking at your dispersion rate and looking at you know where the height as well, I'd say yep. it's manageable, wouldn't you? The descent angle is exactly the, the same. same. Well, that's I mean that's and the dispersion is exactly the same. So definitely, again, another tick well worth considering. I'd say that's two ticks of changing your ball. Pro V1 X A iron, 110 mile an hour off the club face, launching at 22.2. .2 spinning it at 7,940 revs, which is about where mine would be with an eight iron, 34 yards peak height and 148 in the carry, which is absolutely spot on. Those numbers are pretty consistent right the way through. Then we move into the, the other ball, the left dash X ball, 112.9 mile an hour. So again, a little bit hotter, seeing a consistency there of a little bit hotter off the face, uh, launching at 22.3, so pretty much the same in the launch. Spin though, 7,286 revs. You compare that to 7.9, I mean, that's quite a large drop off of nearly six, 700 revs there. So that's quite a number now. We're sitting to see a bit, bit of a difference in the numbers there. And then peaking out at 36 yards high, but carry 153. So again, seeing another five yards of gain on an average out of that pro, out of that left dash X ball. Descent angles 50.4 with the left dash X ball compared to 50 in the descent angle with the Pro V1X. Okay, so again, you've increased distance with the eight iron, changing ball, but my concern would be now the spin numbers. They're getting dangerously low, I think, for this particular club um, and how it will react on a golf course. Is that a concern to you? Yes, absolutely it is a concern. When you start to move into the, the lower irons or the more lofted irons, should we say, I start to see a little bit of a drop off. I saw this with, with the AVX ball. As soon as you move into your sort of more lofted irons, the spin really starts to drop off. And you gotta remember, if I'm spinning it low in the studio, when I get into a situation out here where I've got a bit of semi-rough or a bit of grass that gets between club face and ball, I'm gonna to start to see the drop offs really happen a lot out on the golf course. The only positive thing is that I'm getting a slightly steeper descent angle. It might be only 0.6 degrees, but at least it's still getting up in the air, coming down a little bit sharper into the greens, which will help it stop and get that control. But definitely seeing that drop off in, the, in those sort of more lofted clubs is a concern. So what have we got first of all then? So we're gonna go Pro V1X, just to get okay. a bit of a feel here. 58 degrees. Well, it's nice and hot, thanks, here I'm kind of looking looking for the ball to sort of land and then maybe just check up a little bit as it sort of goes on its, to its second bounce. That certainly did that one. And this is always going to be subject to a decent strike, you know? So both of those balls doing exactly what I would expect the ball to do with a decent strike. That one a little bit cleaner, you see how it came out a bit lower and then scooted forward, but again, it's grabbing on that second bounce, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's um, looking like it's going to go past the hole and then just really, yeah, really bit. grabbing in and so now we're moving into the left dash X. I caught that just a smidgen heavy. Did you notice the sound on that? To be honest with you, with that strike, I expected it to sort of release on, which is exactly what it did. That should grab. Yeah. Did that grab the same? That's pretty impressive um, grouping. Any difference then in feel? Not, fit, not sensing it at the moment. I was expecting to get now a little bit of a clickier feel off the left dash X ball over the Pro V1X, but they felt pretty much the same. Could, could you tell the difference if we blanked them out? No, not, not at, at all. all, not inside or out of here. No. Not 
seeing no. enough of a difference to say that it's, one is spinning less than the other. It's all subject to strike, though, isn't oh, it? Like so said, subject so. to strike. I, I mean, I'm moving. You know, I'm I'm a decent chipper of the yeah. ball, and I'm moving my strike location up and down that face all the time. I can feel it as soon as I hit it. But the ball is doing almost exactly what I expect it to do with the strikes that I get. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Pudding now, just trying to see if I can get a sense of the strike, a sense of the clickiness that I'm expected to, to feel with it. So Pro V1X again to start us off with. Exactly the same as what I'd expect to feel out of a Pro V1X. It's a slightly clickier feel. Than what you get from let's say a Pro V1. Left dash X. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Doesn't sound any different to me from, no. from this from sort of four or five paces away from you. Feels very similar? Very similar. So chipping and putting, exactly the same. You couldn't tell which one was which. Well, that, it's run right the way through. I said it in the studio that I wasn't feeling a difference in the sound, in the strike off the club face. Out here, I, again, this is where you expect to, to hear it, isn't it? You know, you put it onto your putter and you give it a yeah. bit of a click or onto your wedge. You expect to get a slight difference in the acoustics of the ball and even a feel off the club face. I'm just not getting it. It just feels exactly the same as a normal Pro V1X golf ball. So your main concern would be that the spin or lack of spin dropping off when you're hitting in your more lofted irons, full shots, so your eight, nine wedges, that would be your only concern? Yeah, it would. But what I would like to do now moving on from this, because I'm actually quite excited in some ways, because I feel like I'm getting good control on the short game area, like I'm getting good chips that are rolling out exactly how I want them to do it. What I want to do next is I want to take it onto the golf course and I would want to do that in an actual playing environment. So instead of just going Different out here eyes, today, yeah, 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 I yeah, want to actually play a round of golf with it to put it into, you know, so when we head off to France, you know, I might take this golf ball over there and give it a go and just see how it performs in a round of golf, just so I can get some really good feedback on how that golf ball is obviously flying out there, but how it's reacting around the greens as well. Anything else to you to report about this golf ball? Um, Titleist make good golf balls. And I'm not paid to say that. I say that from the heart and from experience. You want more balls, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting low. <laughs> I'm dangerously low. <laughs> what I like about this test is the fact that there is golf balls out there that are a little bit different. And I like the fact that Titleist make golf balls for different types of people. You know, the small percentage of people that are out there that will be spinning the ball particularly high, it's going to be tiny, tiny percentages of players. But they're giving those players the opportunities to have a ball that's going to work right for them. I like it. I think it's good. It's not going to be for everybody, which is probably why Titleist haven't launched this ball on your sort of shop floors. But it's there. It's available. If you order it through your Club Pro, they will be able to get access to this golf ball and get it to you to test. Fantastic. Let me know. Put your comments down below. Is this something you're kind of interested in? Is it something that you want to test yourself? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and we look forward to catching up with you again soon. Stay safe.